So I said at the beginning of class that, you know, try to move at the collective correct pace for the entire class. I mean, obviously that's one of the objectives of a teacher is to try to find that pace. So just stay in communication with me and, you know, we'll go at whatever speed we go. And uh, when you guys need to actually practice something hands-on, uh, please, just like you did today, speak up and uh, we'll take a break from this. And as we get more into this, hopefully we'll get more, like here's the new chunk, now let's do it in the class. But we're just laying a lot of foundation and, and really everything that I'm showing you right here is like an introduction to programming, like a whole semester class. And we're doing it in like three weeks, four weeks. You know, like we do this whole deal in a whole semester for Java. <laughs> and we're doing it in four weeks. So, you know, don't stress too hard and it's gonna come. You're gonna have a little of that experience at week six, like oh, I totally get all that week three stuff. You know, so let's look at uh, constants, iotas, memory addresses and pointers. And that'll be like what we leave on. And because um, we were just using memory addresses. And so we'll, we'll kind of see what all that means. But before we get to that, you know, constants is just declaring a variable again. So this is how you declare a constant. And in programming, you use a constant for something that you want to remain constant. You don't want to change. Once you declare a constant, you can't change the constant. So a constant could be like tax rate. Right? You have to actually go in and physically change the value in the program and then recompile it for it to have a different rate. It's not going to change when it's running. So that would be a constant. Death and taxes, right? Those are constant. The meaning of life is constant. Keeping your P's and Q's in order. <laughs> I thought that was a kind of clever program, <laughs> sorry. And uh, here's just an interesting thing you might see. And so I'm not going to spend really much time on it, nor do I think it's all that important. But they have this concept of a, a constant which can, can increment. And so here we have a constant, and you say it's an iota, and then every time you, you know, redeclare it or define another iota, it goes up one in value. And so that would print 0, 1, 2, those constants, A, B, C. And so constants that go up a certain value, and because you have something that increments, you know, by one, you could, you could also declare it this way, 0, 1, 2. But be, and you could do a couple, and every time it hits a new constant, it resets. All right, so just reset, 0, 1, 2, A, B, C, and then D, E, F, or 0, 1, 2. But then you could do things, and this talks about how you read that in the language spec. And then this uh, is where you would kind of like, hey, I want my numbers not to be 1s and 2s, but 10s and 20s. Well, that's cool. And I threw away the first one. I don't need 0. And then you could do uh, this crazy stuff where that little chunk of code right there will start to create all of my kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, and it'll just be a constant that I could reference I know that's kind of nuts. It's right out of the, the Golang documentation. And, uh, but anyhow, I thought it was, it was kind of interesting. So when you print that out, you can see the binary and the decimal representation of kilobytes and megabytes, you know, how many bytes are in each one, right? And uh, binary, how you, how you write that in binary. I guess binary would be how many binary digits. Interesting. And that's a bitwise shifting up there, those little arrows. So you could learn more about bitwise right there, but um, it's kind of interesting and pretty easy to understand, but nothing you'll ever really use. So, you know, um, pretty straightforward little exercise. And if you want, there's another one. Uh, so this is the kind of the interesting stuff and the sort of mnemonic device for remembering a memory address in Go is just, it's the ampersand. That's how you get the memory address of where something is stored. And so I like this mnemonic device, and where do you live? And where do you live? Because you hear that all the time, right? Where do you live? And so it's the ampersand, gives you the memory address. So here's an example of it. I have a variable A, it's equal to 43. And I could print that out and it shows me the value. Or I could put an ampersand in front of the A and it shows me the address where that value is stored. And so that's the actual memory address. So you just got to remember, hey, if I ever want the memory address, there it is. And that's, that's really helpful because, uh, so here's an exercise where you could try that at home before Thursday. And, and that's useful because we could use that memory address, and we've already seen how we used it with scan, right? Like, okay, put it into this location. Whatever the user entered, put in that location. Okay, so that's the way Go works, and that's one of the ways you could use memory addresses.
And, uh, and then scan, here's the documentation, and just to take a moment so we continue to become familiar with how to read docs. Uh, function scan, and the, it has, uh, you know, for parameters, uh, dot, 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 interface. And so the dot, dot, dots are, takes a very addict number of parameters, unlimited number of parameters from not, none all the way up to however many you give it. And uh, an interface means of any type. So we'll learn a little bit about interfaces later. But that basically means of any type. And it returns an int and an error. So it returns two. Uh, it has two returns. Scan scans text read from standard input, the keyboard, command prompt. And storing successive space separated values into successive arguments. New lines count as space. It returns the number of items successfully scanned. If there is less than the number of arguments, error will report Y. If that is less than the number of arguments, error will report Y. So uh, when we look at the format package, we see that there's print, we see that there's scan, we see that there's sprint, S print. And so we, we see that print has print and printf and print line. Well, we've learned kind of that printf is formatting verbs, or maybe we haven't learned that. So we're going to look at that, sorry. And, and print line, it does the same thing as print, but it adds a new line character at the end. And so if you notice that both print and scan and s print all have either no suffix, or they have the f suffix, or they have the line suffix, right? Okay, cool. So there's some uh, consistency between the three. Well, print prints, scan receives, right, from the user, s print prints to a string. And so sometimes you might want to s print just because I want to format something a certain way and then store it again in a variable. I don't need to print it to standard output. So I'm just going to, you know, format it using sprint f, s string print and format it, s print f, and uh, format it using a formatting verb and then store it in a new variable and then I've got it that way or, you know. Um, so those are what those three different things do. And uh, then there's a, you know, a print to an I.O. writer, something that implements, you know, the writer uh, interface. And then there's also scanning from readers, the reader interface. So we'll see those later. Um, so pointers, uh, so that's uh, memory addresses and a little bit of the format package. So we can point to a memory address. And the symbol for, you know, indicating something's pointing is the asterisk. And I like thinking about the sim symbolism be, you know, what's the symbology? I don't know. What, you know, why did they choose that character? Because often if you read the bottom of the page, right, the asterisk symbol is used in books to reference something more, is it not? Right? It's like, oh, point, this is pointing to something at the bottom of the page, that little thing. So let me go look to see what that is. And so it's kind of like, a, you know, I like that, that they use something that Right? We, we already know what it means. Kind of like we know what dot, dot, dot means. Like, oh, there's more stuff there. And so here's how our pointer works. So a is equal to 43. I could print the value of a. I could print the address of a. Line 10 prints the address of a. I could set a variable equal to the address of a. And when I set a variable equal to the address of a, I could have just said b colon equals ampersand a and then looked up the type of A, and it'd say it's a pointer to an int. Or I could say var b is a pointer to an int, and it's, uh, you know, because what's stored in A is an int, and b is, okay, storing the memory address. So it's pointing to the address, right, where the int is stored. And so if I print, print b, I'm going to get the address. Let's look at that code run. Let's play with it. So this is pointer. There's the code. So first of all, let's uh, let's just see this run. And CD, CD, oh wait. One. Oops, pointer. So I printed the address, the value. I printed the address, and then I printed the address. So that bottom one is 
that last line there, this line right there, did that. Right there. I could have also maybe done it this way, so let me just copy copy that and comment this out. And said B colon equals. Does that run? There we go. And then maybe I could have done this instead. I could have said reflect dot type of. And so reflect is a package that will show me the type. What's the type of B? It's a pointer to an int. Right? Huh? Yeah. 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 It's the I've got the address of where an int is stored, or however. Yeah, that's another way of saying it. Sometimes I feel dumb as a teacher. I'm like, you just said it great. I don't know why it's providing another definition. <laughs> cool, you got it. So, uh, you know, I could also, instead of using reflect type of, I could do this. Percent %t and print f. And so percent %t is the formatting verb, and I'm using print format, and percent %t gives me the type. So when I run this, it'll do the same. Whoa. Uh, I've re imported reflect and I'm not using it. That's what that error said. And uh, and I should probably drop a new line escape character there, slash n for new line, and now it'll show up on separate lines. There we go, pointer to n. So we saw, hey, this is how we can reference a memory address. And then we saw that we could store that memory address in another variable if we want. And that becomes useful because we could then uh, do something like this. And I'll back up and show you those slides we skipped. But I just started talking about something two slides ahead, so I figured I'd go with it. So I have a variable A. I could print the variable. I could print the memory address. I could store the memory address in another variable. Right, I'm pointing to a memory address where an int is stored. And I could print the memory address B. And this is called referencing. That's referencing. This is dereferencing. So it's kind of like a toggle. And, and you, you can't really, maybe you could double toggle. We, we could try it, see what happens. But it's a toggle, right, where I'm saying pointing to a memory address. And so I only have the memory address. Now let me see the value that's there. And that prints 43. Right? It shows me the value. So here, it's a pointer. Shows me the address. Dereference it. No longer have it be a pointer. Show me the value. So now I can say, hey, the value there, make it 42. Right? And so when I now print A, I've actually changed A's value. And so that allows you to basically do pass by reference versus pass by coffee. Co coffee? Pass by coffee. Pass by copy which like, you know, is in Java. That's kind of where I learned about that. And, uh, and this is useful because now we could, instead of passing around a big chunk of data in our program, we could just say, we could pass around the memory address where a big chunk of data is stored. And we could say the memory address is over there. Yeah, yeah. So the couple of things I skipped over, like uh, that's invalid. I'm trying to say C is an int and it's actually an address. It's, so it would be a pointer to an int, right? And basically 12 is the correct way. 15 is exactly the same, but it's not a pointer to an int. And, uh, and here I'm, I'm showing how you dereference, which we've already saw and I explained another one. So dereferencing, referencing, dereferencing. For people watching online, referencing, dereferencing. Write a program that uses memory addresses and pointers. And then review. All right, so we've got a few minutes left. So let's do that. Let's write a program that uses memory addresses and pointers. And if you want to, your program can look just like that.
<laughs> and just practice writing it. Yeah. Okay.